Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to be looking at the Retouch module. The Retouch module can be used to remove unwanted elements from the image. And we can do that by either cloning, healing, blurring and filling using drawn shapes. So let's go through them one by one. Cloning allows us to cover a part of the image by copying another part on top of it. And it's the second one here. Started with cloning because healing is a specific application of cloning and we'll get back to it. For each of the algorithms, you have different shapes that you can use. The first one is a circle, ellipse, a path, a brush, and the last one is to show and edit the shapes that you've already created. Let's say I want to remove this blurred flag here. This is a long exposure image and of course the flag that was fluttering in the wind is blurred. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And I've chosen the clone tool. I'm going to try to add a circle. You can see the familiar shape by now appear on your mouse pointer. Say circle with the feathering radius around it. Put the circle around the area you want to cover and you get another circle which allows you to select the area that you want to copy on top of the area that you've selected. Now if we hide the shapes, you can see that it copied the area that I selected on top of the area that I wanted to cover. Of course, you can make this smaller, bigger. You can right click on it to delete it. And we can do the same using a drone shape. You'll get exactly the same area and you'll have to select where to copy it from. Healing is similar to cloning, however, Cloning makes a direct copy from the area that you've selected. So if we try this again, I'm going to use a ellipse now, and I'm going to copy it from here, which is a bit more orange. And as you can see, it copied the area exactly as it is, and you can see the difference between the surrounding original area and the area that was been, has been copied from here. However, if I use healing instead of cloning, I'm going to delete this and use the healing algorithm. As you can see, the effect is much more subtle now because healing tries to blend the copied area with the surrounding original area. Of course, you'll get a much better result if you select an area that is closer to luminosity and hue to the area that you're trying to cover. For instance, here, instead of copying this area that's much more orange and bright, I can try copying a closer one and the effect would be a lot more subtle. Now both of these algorithms, the healing tool and the cloning tool, require that you copy an area on top of the area that you're trying to cover. However, sometimes that option is not feasible if the image doesn't have any other parts similar to what you're trying to cover. For those, we have two other algorithms. Fill and blur. The fill tool allows you to cover the area with a chosen color and the blur tool applies a blur to the selected uh, region so it smooths out details. The fill tool works by adding 
the color that you've chosen you can pick a color from the image or you can select color from the swatch those two sliders allow you to adjust the brightness of the color and the opacity the blur tool has the same shapes however it just blurs the details and you can choose the blur type the radius and the mask opacity of course the bigger the radius the more blur you have the lower the radius the less blur and the higher the opacity of the mask the more you can see it the lower then the more the original part of the image is visible. Now we've already seen how you can move the copied area after placing the shape. However, if you are trying to delete a bigger shape and you would like to add more shapes and you would want the others to be copied from similar areas, a nifty trick would be to press the shift after selecting the shape and then while holding the shift button you can select where you want it to be copied from suppose I want it to be copied from here now when I place it it's directly copied from here subsequent shapes will be copied from a relative distance as you can see even if I change the shape this way the copied areas here are following the exact copied areas with the same distance now suppose you want to use the same area to cover the whole area that I wanted replaced but using multiple shapes I can use a similar trick and press shift and control at the keyboard select the shape and then while holding the control shift I select the area that I want to use and then create a shape and then you would notice that all subsequent shapes are copied from the same area now you can as well select the copied area while placing the target area by just clicking and then while still holding the mouse button clicked you can drag to select the source area however this method does not affect subsequent shapes and of course you can't use it while adding a path or adding a brush it only works for the circle and ellipse the bottom part is wavelet decompose wavelets allow us to decompose the image into different layers with different levels of detail. This way we can work on one layer without affecting the others. As you can see here we have a bar and these bars represent the different layers that were decomposed using wavelets into varying levels of details. The black square here is the entire de non-decomposed image. Gray squares in the middle, which we don't have yet, would uh, represent the layers going from fine details on the left to coarse details on the right. The white square is the residual image. So the remainder of the image after the detail layers have been extracted. We can add layers to the image by selecting the bottom triangle and pulling it to the right to select different layers with different 
levels of details. That line that we see here shows us which layers or which details are visible at the current zoom level. If I change the zoom level, as you can see, the level of visible details changes and you can see that in that gray bar here. If we wanted to work on a specific level, then you select it and as you can see the circle moved to it and now all the edits we do will be just on that detail level. Once you've added a retouch edit to a level, you'd get an orange bar under it and this way you can always tell which layers have been edited and which have not. The scales number on top here indicates how many detail layers in the image have been decomposed to. You can see that here too. So it corresponds to the levels that you can see in the bar, six. The number under it is current, is the current selected layer that we're working on. Now it's four, five, select another layer you can see it changed here the last one merge from is related to the top triangle that we haven't discussed yet this triangle allows you to select the minimum level to which all the edits that you've added on the more coarse layers will be copied what does that mean if I select one everything that I've added above one will be copied to the layers below it if I added something to level five it would be copied from five to one if I added something to level well this is level six but if I added something to level four it will be copied to three to one and so on and so forth if I move this to level 4, everything that I add on 5 and 6 will be copied down, well, 5 will be copied to 4, 6 will be copied to 5 and 4, and not below this level. If we set the merge to 0, then merging is disabled. It doesn't mean that it will be copied to everything. If you want it to be copied to everything, you set it to 1, because that's the lowest, and then everything will be copied from the courses to the finest detail levels. Under, we have the display wavelet scale button. And if you click on that, you will see the current selected details from the level that you're, you're on at the moment. In this view, we have an extra scale here, which is the preview single scale. And this control allows us to change the black, white, and gray points of the wavelet scale preview just to make it easier to see. It does not change the details that are selected. It just helps you see what you're actually now working on. Next, we have a cut shapes and paste shapes that allows you to move the shapes from one layer to the other. If you select a layer, you can cut the shapes that are in it. If you select another layer, you can move them to it. Next, we have the temporarily switch off shapes. Just toggles all the shapes on and off. That's all shapes, not just the ones on the current layer. So effectively disables the module temporarily and re-enables it. And the last one is the now familiar display mask. Like in other modules, it shows us the currently selected areas in the layer in yellow. 
that's it for the retouch module I hope that you found this video interesting if you have any questions corrections or recommendations please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time bye bye